like the end of the story, right? And then I was very, very saddened because it's um, it's two kids, it's two youth, two Stratford youth. So, uh, what have you been told so far? But we're hearing that they could possibly be linked to other fires as well in the region. So I saw the Connecticut Post article that said that various communities are involved in this, and uh, it's devastating. It's, I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, the good thing is no one was hurt. The bad thing was that they there was a lot of destruction and people were emotionally impacted and some economically impacted, I'm sure. When you think about how did two kids from my town that I'm the mayor of decide to torch our history, not putting blame on you or anybody else, but mm. you look at like who, not who dropped the ball, but who, who might have done more to keep those kids from being in that place or I mean, do you look at it sort of in a wider frame? So I look at it as Stratford kids and that's upsetting. But then I look at it as their kids in general. They're, they were 17 when they did this. And you know what were they thinking? Or maybe they weren't thinking. But in reality, they have no connection to the Shakespeare site, absolutely none. They weren't even born um, when Shakespeare was running. And outside of it being an empty building, they probably didn't know anything more about it. What's next for that spot as it's sort of still moving? You're talking about the insurance as well. Yeah, so it, we are moving along. We've started some community listening groups. We have a, a task force that's doing a great job with a lot, a lot of with experience in the theater industry and also in the finance and um, recreation. So we're we're listening to folks about what they want. And right now, it looks like people want something that's cultural, something that's artistic, open space, recreation. What would you say to those kids? Like, if I was their mom, it would be like, uh, what are you thinking? I don't know how, what we're gonna do and how we're gonna make this better. And hopefully this doesn't impact the rest of their lives. And as the mayor? Yeah, I'm pretty disappointed. I'm pretty disappointed and uh, wish they had other, had done something different with their lives than what's gonna happen for the next several years for them. Do you wish there had been sort of like a town-wide, like, appreciate our history thing that that could something that that helped so we do so many great things in this town and there's so many social and community um, and and collaborations between our social service agencies and our nonprofits I think if they wanted to get connected they have the opportunity but you know they're 17 and they were ingenious I guess because they did if the, if the Connecticut Post story is true, they've done this not just once, but a couple times. So it's very, it's, it's heart-wrenching. And I'm sorry for their families. I'm really sorry for their families. And how do you think their moms are feeling? I can't even imagine. Devastated. And, and the insurance, what have you found out about that? So we have um, coverage for about 1.8 million. And then we just got all the um, receipts in for all the expenses. And so it looks like, um, I'm not exactly sure where we're gonna come out, but we should come out north of a million. Um, I'm, we're hoping to get all the details tonight so I can deliver it to the council at the council meeting. What do you have to say to the community members? Because people are gonna be angry and hurt and this is wrong, it's gonna stir up emotions. What do you have to say to your constituents about their feelings and perhaps what might be done moving forward productively with that emotion and energy? So probably the first thing I need to say is our public safety, our police department and our fire marshal's office did an outstanding job doing the investigation. I mean, it was so thorough, they brought in the state fire marshal's office and then our uh, police department and the detective bureau um, did pretty amazing work um, to get to the bottom of this. I guess they've been working on this for a little while when they got the tip. So, that was the really great thing coming as the community leader. Um, I'm really proud of them and, and very thankful that they're as professional um, as they are. Um, as far as the kids, and I, I really don't know what else to say except for I hope it, it all works out that they can make something better out of their lives than what they're facing today. Okay. I'm sorry, one more question. I meant like to the residents. Like we, we know the people at the Shakespeare meetings and that they're going to be angry. They're going to be hurt. There may be tears this afternoon. What do you have to say to them? And do you have a suggestion how to make that emotion productive for the town, whether it's the theater or young people or what have you? Well, the rebuilding. I mean, we have a huge opportunity. Now we have a little bit of seed money if the council wants to use it. 
but we can make something better. And I know that may be hard for some folks to understand because what they had in that theater building was, was the greatest thing, but we could probably do better. And I'm looking forward to moving that forward. Last question, I promise. To people who are like angry and upset about hearing this news, you know, what do you have to say about to them to help them come to terms? That they're angry with the arsonist that did this? I don't really have anything. I, I couldn't even offer counseling or anything like that. Um, but maybe through the clergy association, that might be something that we could put together um, for people to deal with their anger and their upset. Um, but that's an idea, Suzanne. Thank you. I'm just going to stand here and get a shot of you looking pretty for one more minute. <laughs> with my hair so, so I don't have to use today. B roll if you're doing guest bug. Oh, okay. Oh, good job.